Entry was kidnapped by armed individuals for a few weeks ago, has been murdered. He was dropped dead yesterday. Villagers say there were heavy gunshots yesterday and this morning. According to a villager, he was forced out of his palace on June 2, 2021, and his wife beat in the night he was taken. Away from that, part-time teachers of Government Balingua High School, GBHS, Bubongo, Petipari, Village Douala, are threatening to stage a protest demanding the payment of their June salary. They accuse the principal, Chumindan Fak Andre Marie, of refusing to pay their ninth-month salary and claims that they did not teach. Meanwhile, their verbal contract states that they're supposed to be paid nine months. Talking to my media prime TV, Principal Chumi Andre Marie has refused all allegations saying he had settled all the part-time teachers in his institution. Stay with us. We'll bring you updates of this news. The uh, downpour earlier this morning temporarily paralyzed movements around some parts of Douala, like it is the case whenever it rains, Makepe Misoke, and some parts of Bangay had high waters, limiting movements from around 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Parts of Bonamusadi neighborhood is also noted and becoming a rig zone whenever it rains. Inhabitants fear the possibility of another flood, given the heart of the rainy season is approaching. Recent videos circulating on social media suggest immorality is on the rise in the country. Minors and uh, youths of age have been the talk of the day since uh, the videos were exposed on social media. In the report that follows, Nora Kakebi talks about the high or the rise in social indecency and what should be done. Three youths are currently under police custody in Umbesa for having committed an abominable act in which they gang raped a grandmother to death. For the past two months in Umbesa subdivision, in the Mbam and Inobo division, in the center region, a series of rape cases on aged women have been recorded with the most recent being the case of 85 years old Mama Esaba Abong Monique who was raped to death. Reports say it is not the first time the grandmother has been raped. The first time was in her house, the second incident took place along the village path, and the third occurred in the farm while she was walking. Most of the elderly women in this village attempted to move around with their machetes for self-defense against rapists, or they are being accompanied around for fear of the unknown. Green Singo is another village where similar acts are being practiced. The traditional ruler has expressed concerns and feels some degree of insecurity in the village. He added that he feels threatened to even track down the perpetrators of these messless practices. On their part, most of the women lament the daily ordeal they go through in the hands of some youths in the village. The wish of the villagers is to see an end to the devilish acts by some of the youths considered to be the hope in the development of the village. It should be noted that a similar act took place in Douala in the littoral region on July 8th, where a father attempted raping his own daughter, but fortunately was caught red-handed. Sexual immorality seems to have eaten so deep into the society, where even some parents have lost reason as to have sex with their children, while children feel just okay to organize sex parties to show how much values have been lost. Just recently, a group of young men and women were caught in Bonamusa di Douala having a sex orgy. It is hoped that the authorities that be beef up security and put an end to such practices. Inhabitants of Oza and Mesemundungo in Yawonde have frowned at the ongoing demolition exercise carried out by a city council agents building constructed less than 30 meters away from the main road are uh, being demolished. Council officials say all the buildings that have been destroyed so far were on compromising positions and it is necessary to respect the law if the city has to be given a facelift, the facelift that it deserves. Details in the following report compiled by Fon Quinter. Denizens of Oza, Wan, and Mesa Mendongo in the central region of Cameroon woke up to the city council bulldozers demolishing their houses. The angry population following the demolition of houses they have occupied for several years took to the streets with placards in hands decrying the action carried out by the city council official. According to them, 
The council engaged in the demolition of houses constructed by the roadside with non-compliance to the law which states that houses must be constructed at least 30 meters away from the road. The people of Ozawan have been witnessing series of demolitions since September 20, 2020. There is a presidential decree that talks of a distance of 30 meters away from the main road, and here we gave up to 60 meters. To them, officials are biased as they fail to demolish the houses of some personalities who fail to respect the 30 meter distance away from the road. Residents say the Yawunda City Council is demolishing their homes. Meanwhile, the case is still in court and they're in possession of land titles and respect the 30 meter distance. Thus, the action by the City Council pushed them into doubting the value of land certificates. To this effect, they have called on authorities to look into their plea as demolishing their homes without a temporary residential site will make life miserable for them. Akumalan and uh, Tuakom Integrated Health Centers in Babenda 2 Subdivision Northwest Region were recipients of uh, medical equipment worth uh, 17 million francs CFA from the Babenda 2 Council handing over the equipment to the hospital. Mayor Chinwe uh, Peter also disclosed the council will in the days ahead donate other equipment to some health centers in the Northwest Region. Charles Kebwa reports. The Akumulang and Atuakum Integrated Health Centers in the Bamina 2 subdivision of the Northwest Wednesday, July 8, 2021, were recipients of medical equipment worth 17 million from the Bamina 2 Council. When the staff go out now for outreach, no, no matter the number, the, the number of outreach that are going out, they will have enough uh, equipment to work on the patients. And so by so doing, the patients will be better care for equipment, electronic blood pressure machines, beds, microscopes, wheelchairs, incinerators, manual BP apparatus, photocopy machines, vacuum, extractor, amongst others, were handed over to the two chiefs of centers of the health centers to take back to their communities. The beds and other medical equipment it will go a long way to improve productivity, the comfort of patients, as well as those of their personnel. We say a big thank you to the Bamenda, to Council, and we promise that we will take good care of this equipment, we will put them in use, and we'll maximize them to the fullest so that our patients will be happy and our staff too will be happy. Presenting the medical equipment at the explanade of the Bamenda 2 Council. Given security challenges face moving to the health centers, the mayor of the Bamenda 2 Council, Chenny Peter, accompanied by First Deputy Mayor, handing over the medical equipment, cautioned the two medical chiefs of the health centers to make good use of the equipment provided to serve their respective communities by providing them with quality health services. You have people have this place, they cannot attend to medical treatment, which is very important. We cannot talk about construction without help. So we need to make sure that we assist the population to be strong so that we can reconstruct our municipality and our region. The mayor, Chenry Peter, disclosed his council will in the days ahead donate medical equipment to three other health centers in the Bamela 2 council area as requested by the health centers due to acute shortage of medical equipment and its urgent need. Considering the fact that there's an emergency, we don't expect people to move from those areas to go to the regional hospital. We must so that we give assistance so they can handle the patient with immediate effect. The donation of this medical equipment by the Bermuda 2 Council comes after the mayor, Jenny Peter, recently paid bills of some patients at the regional hospital in Bermuda. In church news, nine seminarians have been ordained deacons by the uh, Bishop of the Boya Diocese, Michael Bibi. They were ordained with a call for them to uh, spread the message of love, peace, and unity within disturbed communities. Details with Clarice Ekoe. You granted the church's body. These are the nine seminarians named the badge of bush breakers who have been ordained as deacons after nine years of study at the seminary. 
they were installed during this highly attended requiem mass that held at the Divine Mercy Co Cathedral site in Boya. While ordaining these deacons, Bishop Michael BB admonished them to be assiduous, humble, and committed in the discharge of their spiritual rebirth duties to the Christian folk, while stressing on the needs for them to believe in what they teach and practice what they preach. Also, as heralds of God's word, emphasis was laid on the need for them to be agents of peace, love, and unity in troubled communities. They speak or say something and they do not put it in the practice, it becomes very difficult for the Christians to believe. And that is why I use the opportunity to remind the victims all the priests and religious and myself and all the Christian people that it is important for each and every one of us to be witnesses to whatever you say. And I'm sure that if we are witnesses in our daily lives as Christians, I am sure it is going to help us change the loss of things as far as the society is concerned. To some of the newly ordained deacons, they express delight for the new responsibility bestowed on them while promising to abide to the cathedral laws and serve God's people in truth and love. I look forward to serve God's people because Jesus Christ himself tells us in Matthew 20, 28, where he came not to be served but to serve. That is my ideal. Looking forward to him to configure myself to the person of Christ so as to serve God's people in the Boya Diocese. People of God, I start seeing into those needs and I see myself just like a lamb ready to go out to the field there and pour out my little life onto them for their own salvation and for my own salvation in order to make sure that what God created us for comes to fulfillment. It should be noted that these are the second batch of deacons ordained by Bishop Bibi since he took mandate at the Diocese of Boya. These deacons will further undergo six months of training, after which they will be ordained as Reverend Fathers. As part of fulfilling spiritual, moral, and social concerns and responsibilities of members, over 20 members of the Christian Women Fellowship of the Presbyterian Church, Buna Musa Di Duala, have benefited from the free hands of the movement. One of the beneficiaries acquired a successful prosthetic leg implant, changing the story of her life for good. Dolingonde took keen interest and compared the following. It was during their regular tradition of meeting at the first half of their annual evangelical and social welfare evaluation conference that over 20 members of the Christian Women Fellowship, Bonamusa Dibdwala, were spiritually, morally, physically, and financially empowered thanks to the collective efforts of members of the movement. Most peculiar of the beneficiaries is the case of Belinda B., a member of the sister group from Peka 43 Kilomet, who had been identified doing God's work with an amputated leg following an accident. As I was beginning accident in 2008, I don't over suffer. I don't know what I mean. 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 So, I suffer the day until I got to my foot. I don't know what I mean. Then I don't know what I mean. I meant to. After a series of failed attempts to get an artificial leg plus financial constraints, the CWF members of PC Bonamu Saji took it upon themselves to foot in the over 1 million franc CFA prosthetic leg implant project, which becomes a reality today. <laughs> Madame Abane Doris is the president of CWF PC Bonamusadi, who explains how and why the group took the light in Belinda's case while expatiating the role of the movement. We came in contact with this lady at the rally ground because we admired her conducting with crutches. So during the, our presentation meeting, the president, president and the regional secretary gave us a note, a letter written by her, that Bonamusadi should handle this letter. We brought the letter back to the end. We 
ask the group members through them the content of the data, write the content of the data to them, and the group members accepted us and help this woman. The CWF on Amosari has been doing great things, great things to touch people's life. Even today during this ceremony, we we're able to give envelopes to some needy members in our group. Elder Fontadius is the CWF elder who also witnessed the kind gesture offered to the over 20 beneficiaries and is very much impressed by the moves of the women. It's one of those occasions where we see how Christianity is put into practice. It's not just what we read, it's just not what uh, we talk about, but how and as movements always working hand in glove, the president of the Christian Men Fellowship now comments on today's largesse. We work hand in hand on most occasions. And today we were invited by the CW. Behind me was CEO Dorage Corp of CMF. On his part as a spiritual leader and parish pastor of P.C. Bonamusadi, the Reverend Jones Ebot Ayok adheres that the church's role is not limited to spiritual enhancement, but lots more with the need for reservations. And the Bible is very clear in Matthew 25, 31, 46, about our responsibilities to the less privileged and both us in the church and those outside. And today the women of the Namosa Israel are living up to that biblical teaching. We in the Namosa, we in the PCC, we believe that the Bible is not only theory, but what we live, what we live in daily life. After blessing the prosthetic leg and successfully implanting aid, the women, under the leadership of the Reverend Pastor Jones Ibot Ayuk, further handed an envelope of 100,000 francs CFA to enable Belinda, just like the other beneficiaries, live a happier life. In entertainment news, promoter of FG Production has presented its record label or its record label, the very first signed artist and new music video. This was yesterday during a press conference organized here in Douala. Audrey Zatsa attended this conference. She now reports. In the premises of FG Production, with some media persons and music lovers present, the promoter proceeded in the presentation of the record label. Basically, the reason we called for the conference uh, was, first of all, to introduce the level to the public. And we know the media is the best, uh, maybe the best people to contact. Yeah. Very first signed artist, Sissi Mignon, a new music video, Emonu, released today, July 9th, 2021. <laughs> In this masterpiece featuring Sergio Polo, the artist who is shared between the Francophone and Anglophone culture, seeks to reignite the spirit of love amongst Cameroonians, especially with the ongoing social political crisis. What I'm, I'm preaching today is love. So you have to be together, you have to join, make peace, love each other. Upon the creation of FJ Production in February 2020, five tracks have been produced with artists Sissi Mignon, Moitié Moitié, Tu n'as pas rencontré, Marémi, Time Di Go Manda Di Bolé, and recent one, Emon Nou, all available on their YouTube platform. The record label Future Generation, as the name implies, has as vision to produce young music talents. In sports, uh, this weekend is pregnant with uh, so many sporting activities on the uh, agenda. And Rwana focuses on uh, handball and uh, football in the following report. The Elite One Championship enters its 13th playing day in Pool B, while Pool A gets into its 11th day of action this weekend in Stadia across the national territory. The cracker of the day will be Young Sport Academy against the no-nonsense Cotosport of Garwa at the Maya 6 Queen Playing Arena. 
According to the authorities of the Abakwa boys, they are psychologically and physically fit to face their opponent this Saturday, July 10. So we are conscious of the fact that we have to stop the bleeding. If we don't stop the bleeding, we are going to die. So uh, the next game is the, the, the opportunity we have to try to stop. The, the name of the, the opponent is not important. But on sport is a team we have to play in the championship amongst other teams. And uh, we are just prepared to play a, a serious game tomorrow. In other games, New stars of Douala, fresh from a 3-0 lashing in the hands of Colum Football Club, will be hoping to share the spoils or obtain all three points of the day when they face their sister side Lezastri at the Bepanda, an next stadium. Panthe Sportive Dundi shall equally host Tonel Kalara Club of Yaoundim, fresh from a 2-0 victory in Bamenda. Meanwhile, on Sunday, July 11, two games have been programmed to be played in Bafusam. Jiko Football Club from a 2-0 victory in Douala against New Sportive will be aspiring to keep the same momentum this weekend as they host a Douala side Avion Academy. In the Guinness Super League, a total of five games counting for day 17, 19 and 21 will be on. It will be a clash of titans between our football club and Canon Girls this weekend in Yaoundi, giving its stakes. Our football club, ranked second on the general standing with 46 points, has nothing to lose as compared to her opponent, Canon Girls, battling for survival in the championship. In other games, FC Ebolova will host Renaissance de Guide and Amazon Football Club shall lock horns with Edin Football Club. However, the grand finale of the Kamte Volleyball Championship will hold this Sunday, July 11 at the National School of Public Works in Yaoundé. In the female category, Force Army, a police, shall face Bafia Volleyball Evolution. While in the male category, Paul Autonom de Douala will wrestle with Force Army, a police, at 6 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being with us all through the week. See you on Monday, 6.30, for another edition of Prime News on my major prime. Lasha Kingsley coordinated the news produced by Ewane Elaine Olinga. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. Stay tuned to my major prime at 7 p.m. You'd enjoy a fresh edition of Prime R with Kumlu, not only on the African Eye. Enjoy.